Yo, my name is Benjamin and in this video I'm very excited to introduce all new color styles with support for theming. This allows you to define a color palette both for a light mode and a dark mode so you can design websites that match the appearance settings of your device or operating system. In Framer you simply design your color palette once and then you can use it throughout your entire project even within animations. So let's dive into our demo project, which is a simple blog template. And this file is set up using our CMS. So here we have the index page and over here we have the detail pages. And we can use the new color styles with theming support to design both a light and a dark mode version of our blog. I'll select our home page and head over to the fill property. As you can see, the fill property is currently set to white, so we're not using a color style just yet. In this release, we also redesigned this UI, placing the color styles front and center, while always allowing you to customize the color by keeping the picker open as well. So let's create a new color style for our page background. Here we can give our color style a name, but you might also notice there's now a brand new control in which we can define both a light and a dark version of our color style. On dark mode, we would like our page background color to be black instead of white. So we have a single color style with two unique values. So let's create this color style. And as we do so, it gets added to the bottom of our list. I already have defined a few styles within this project, but we can simply sort them to reorganize. Now, as you can also tell by looking at the property panel, we're now using the backdrop style instead of a plain white value for the fill property of our homepage. These new color styles can also be used within text styles. So here we have an H1 style called title and it uses the titles color style and that color style also has themes. It's black on light mode and it's white on dark mode. This is a really powerful workflow as now we can simply assign this text style anywhere knowing that the text layers will work well on both light and dark mode. And these new color styles work practically anywhere in Framer. For example, we can also use them within effects. So here we have a collection list and each row has a simple hover effect. And within the hover effect, we can animate the fill property. And instead of using a solid color, we can animate to a color style and that color style can have themes as well. I think it's pretty magical how easy it now is to design animations and interactions in Framer that work well on both light and dark mode. In this release, we also made a lot of tweaks to the assets panel in Framer. It's now easier to differentiate text styles from link styles. Plus, you can now find all of your color styles in here as well. You can even create new color styles right from within the styles menu. To edit a color style, you can simply select it right from within this panel. And this also allows you to customize the light and dark values. It's a really quick way to iterate on your websites as now any layer that uses any of these color styles can be customized from within the assets panel. I can also right click on any color here to rename, duplicate, delete, or clear the dark style. You can also use color styles without any theming functionality. If you simply define a single color value, it will still work great as a reusable style. Finally, there's now a new icon in the canvas toolbar here that you can click to toggle between dark and light mode. This not only sets the app UI, but it also now updates all the color styles to their matching theme. Meaning you can quickly see what your website will look like in each respective theme without having to preview or publish. And this even works outside of web pages in Framer. I can also use this on the canvas. 
For example, here I have a simple canvas note that I can now design to work well in both dark and light mode, ensuring the instructions remain legible and matching the user preference. And that's pretty much it for this video. This has been one of our most requested features, so we're super excited to get this out there. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and stay tuned for more updates coming soon.